Mr. Josiah Oldcastle lived in a small house in the country which he liked very much. There was also a small garage with red doors and inside was something which Mr. Oldcastle liked best of all. It was a blue car with a black hood. It had four brass lamps and a brass thermometer. It was an Austin Clifton Heavy 12-4 and it was called Gumdrop. One morning a letter arrived. It's from London. They want Gumdrop to appear on the television at three o'clock tomorrow afternoon. The sun was shining when Mr Oldcastle set off with Gumdrop the next morning. At a quarter to twelve they crossed Tower Bridge and drove past the Tower of London. Suddenly a yeoman of the guard ran up. My name is Biffin and I'd be obliged for a lift to Westminster. They won't allow me on the bus with this partisan of mine. Jump in then, said Mr Oldcastle. They reached St Paul's Cathedral at a quarter past twelve. Just then two men in a yellow car turned so sharply into the road that Gumdrop had to stop. Stop those men, shouted a policeman. I am Sergeant Bluemantle, and all those men have stolen a lot of money from the bank. We must catch them. There was lots of traffic in Fleet Street. The yellow car was way in front of them. By the time they reached the law courts, it was a quarter to one. A man in a wig was sitting in the middle of the crossing. He was very angry. Those villains in that yellow car knocked me down. If I don't see them jailed for this, then my name is not Sir Pomeroy Pendlebury Clutterbuck, Justice of Her Majesty's High Court. Please get in then, said Mr Oldcastle, and the judge did just that. It was a quarter past one when they reached Whitehall. The thieves suddenly turned right. Follow them through the horse guards, ordered Sir Pomeroy. And you, my men, he called to the sentries, follow us. They passed Buckingham Palace at half past one. The thieves drove straight through the band of the Grenadier Guards. Gumdrop was stopped by Drummer Thumpet. I'll make mincemeat of them for this, he cried and jumped in. Gumdrop chased the thieves around Piccadilly and back to Trafalgar Square. I shall be late for my television programme, complained Mr Oldcastle. Yes, but we must arrest those fellows first, said Sergeant Bluemantle. And have them up in court, added Sir Pomeroy. In Parliament Square, Big Ben struck two and the bells of Westminster Abbey joined in. It was getting very late. Gumdrop couldn't go very fast because of the weight of the others. It was just as well that Corporal Withers and Trooper Gaskin had their horses to ride on. They went up that street, said a Chelsea pensioner. Get in then, said Mr Oldcastle, and show us the way. It was nearly half past two when they reached the Albert Hall. Then they had to stop to allow the orchestra members over the road. If you're after those two in that yellow menace, I'll show you the way, cried the trombone player, and in he jumped. I shall never get to the studios at this rate, protested Mr Oldcastle, driving as fast as he possibly could. There they go, we'll catch them yet, cried all the passengers. The thieves' car was getting away when they saw a police car in the road. They turned their car sharply left and drove through an open gate. Gumdrop went in after them and the police car followed. Look there, cried Mr Oldcastle in delight. It's the television studios. I've been trying to get here all day. It was now five minutes to three. There was no way out for the thieves. They jumped out of their car, ran up the steps and through the doors. The others all ran up the stairs after them. They might get out the back and escape, said Sergeant Blue Mantle to Mr Oldcastle. Let's try to head them off. He turned Gumdrop round and did just that. Then he drove Gumdrop through a wide doorway into a corridor. The thieves were running towards them, followed by all the others. As Gumdrop was blocking the way, the bandits opened a door and ran straight in. It was the television studio, and the time was exactly three o'clock. In the studio, the programme had just started. The television crew were very surprised as everyone came tumbling in. The policemen held tight to the thieves as Sergeant Blumantle put handcuffs on the robbers, watched over by all the others who'd taken part in the chase. This is all thanks to Gumdrop said the presenter of the programme, which was watched by millions of people. Then everyone sang a special song for Gumdrop, who had been brought into the studio, especially for everybody to see. 